Hey everyone, welcome. Today I want to take a look at some news on decentralized exchanges and we're going to be focusing on one primarily which is Uniswap. Now we haven't talked a lot about swaps on this channel but it's a great way to trade one digital asset for another. So this is Uniswap and just for a brief introduction for those who are uninformed, this is just now launching version 3 and you can click use Uniswap and from here you say what cryptocurrency you want to start with and what you want to end up with. And then it'll tell you that conversion. So let's say we have 0.1 ETH and you can see I'd get 74 one inch in exchange. So where exactly does this money come from? Well, it comes from pools and people have the opportunity to contribute funds to these pools and get a percentage of the fees. So when you look in here, you can see there's a liquidity provider fee, which is distributed to those who contribute funds to the pool. In a traditional centralized exchange environment, you're going to have cryptocurrency pairs, but when you go to buy or sell one of these cryptocurrencies, you're matched with an order in an order book. So here are people willing to sell a cryptocurrency, in this case, Ethereum, and here are people willing to buy Ethereum. Decentralized exchanges change this because you're no longer paired with an individual, you receive money from a pool, and you have no association to your identity. So that is the first part of why they are decentralized. You don't have to go through any KYC, but you're also not going to be able to work with fiat currencies. You can only use cryptocurrencies. The second reason why these are decentralized is because they often have some form of governance token, and this is a cryptocurrency that allows the people to vote on the future of the project. So I would like to one day do a dedicated video on becoming a liquidity provider, but for now, I just wanna focus on some of the big changes with Uniswap, two of them specifically. So the first big one is that Uniswap is on V3, and you can find the information on that literally from the homepage, it's right here. And this will give you a, a pretty good introduction to what V3 has to offer. If you're brand new to decentralized exchanges, this stuff probably doesn't mean a whole lot. If you're new, I'd recommend reading through this. However, for those who might have a little bit more knowledge, there is a blog post covering this as well. And within here, it talks about a few key things. The first big thing is capital efficiency, which allows liquidity providers, the people who provide money for the pools, to have significant higher returns for their capital invested. And then the second thing, which is just a little bonus, even with these groundbreaking design improvements, the gas cost of V3 swaps on Ethereum mainnet is slightly cheaper than V2. Transactions made on the Optimism deployment will likely be significantly cheaper. So this is an interesting note. You see, they've improved the overall experience and they've increased the, the cheapness. Oh, that's not the way to say it. No, the fees for these transactions are less. One thing mentioned here is Optimism, which is an example of a layer two Ethereum solution which allows for significantly higher transactions and lower gas. We're gonna talk a bit about that, but just to get an idea of how much gas the Uniswap system uses, it's estimated that it's over a third of all of the gas used on Ethereum. So if Uniswap can adopt a layer two solution, basically this will free up a lot of the Ethereum processing for other people who are not using Uniswap. In other words, gas fees on Ethereum are going to go down, and the overall Uniswap experience will be better because it will be faster and have less fees. So when people say layer two or L2 solution, they just mean some system built on top of Ethereum designed for Ethereum scalability, basically higher transactions per second and lower fees. So the one that is mentioned in this article here is optimism. However, it may be the case that this decision was overruled. As you remember, I mentioned Uniswap is a decentralized exchange, and part of this is having governance over the project. So those who have the Uni cryptocurrency can take votes on different decisions, and you can see these votes here in this example article. But what exactly is this about? This is to deploy Uniswap v3 in Arbitrum, which is a competitive layer two solution. So what exactly does this pool mean? Well, first off, note that Almost everybody voted yes for this poll, so pretty much everybody wants Uniswap v3 to be deployed on Arbitrum. The people who have Uni can cast their vote, and this will decide the future of Uniswap. Now, where I'm not entirely clear is the fact that this passed mean that it's guaranteed, 
or is it really just noted down here the decision to indicate your interest for Uniswap moving forward with the deployment of Uniswap v3 on Arbitrum? Which, you know, it's probably a little bit more open. I don't know if this is a final statement that, hey, we're going to use Arbitrum as opposed to Optimism. Rather, it's just opening the Uniswap v3 license to include code deployed on Arbitrum and allowing the community developers to implement Uniswap v3 on Arbitrum. So this might be an opening for them to try out numerous different options, not just Optimism. You can find these two project websites at offchainlabs.com for Arbitrum and optimism.io for Optimism. These are both examples of layer two rollups. So on ethereum.org, it talks about layer two rollups and what they're for. And you can see the main uses are listed right here. Reducing fees for users, open participation, and fast transaction throughput. There's two main types here, zero knowledge rollups or ZK rollups and optimistic rollups. Both Arbitrum and Optimism are examples of optimistic rollups. And you can read into that more, but essentially they assume transactions are valid. So they're a little optimistic about the output. So you can find the article on all of the scaling problems for Ethereum, and it talks about all the different types such as on-chain scaling, so this specifically talks about things that they can do to Ethereum itself. And then off-chain scaling, which talks about the layer two solutions. There's a lot of different options, so I don't want to get into all of these. And honestly, I'm not an expert on all of these. Um, I'm not an expert on any of these, to be honest. But the one I know the most about are the rollups. So that's where I found this link to optimistic rollups. So basically, they do the processing off-chain outside of layer one and the data is posted to layer one where consensus is reached. Ethereum also has a very handy glossary where you can look up any of these terms. So here's an example of a fraud proof. To increase speed, transactions are rolled up into batches and submitted to Ethereum in a single transaction. They are assumed valid but can be challenged if fraud is suspected. A fraud proof will then run the transaction to see if fraud took place. This method increases the amount of transactions possible while maintaining security. Some rollups use validity proofs, and then it links to optimistic rollups. Apologies on just spewing a bunch of articles at you. That's not the goal of this video. The summary of what I just said is that having a layer two solution for Uniswap is going to make transactions faster and cheaper, not just for users of Uniswap, but it'll also make it cheaper for people not using Uniswap, just using the Ethereum network for other purposes, because Uniswap uses so much of the Ethereum network. And if you wanna get an idea of how much faster a layer solution is going to be, well, here is a statement from off-chain labs themselves saying that it could allow up to 4,500 transfer transactions per second. And they do mention that the throughput of a chain is highly linked to the specific transactions being benchmarked. So for this estimate, they used very simple transactions of sending cryptocurrency. Now, I imagine numerous apps will start switching to these layer two solutions. And I say this not only because of the benefit they offer, but also the ease of adoption. So reading from the same article here, we can scroll up and within the section on Arbitrum rollups, from a user and developer perspective, interacting with Arbitrum feels exactly like interacting with Ethereum. Supports the same RPC interface as Ethereum, supports all EVM languages, and natively supports all Ethereum tooling without any special adapters. The only way in which an Arbitrum rollup chain does not resemble Ethereum is the cost. Transactions on Arbitrum cost a small fraction of what they would if run natively on Ethereum. Porting contracts from Ethereum to Arbitrum is fast and simple. There's no need to change any code or download any new software. Arbitrum has full support for the EVM just like Ethereum. This means that smart contract languages that work with Ethereum, such as Solidity, also work natively with Arbitrum. So if the cost to developers to adopt a system like Arbitrum is very low or nothing, then there's not a whole lot of reason not to use a layer two solution if it makes your app a whole lot faster. This also brings up the natural question of what about ETH2? Right now, Ethereum 1 is in the process of transitioning to Ethereum 2, which will be proof of stake and potentially have thousands of transactions per second. Where do these layer two solutions fit in? If you would adopt a layer two solution, are you basically just having a temporary fix until proof of stake? Well, most likely Ethereum 2 is going to launch, drastically increase transaction throughput, and these layer two solutions are still going to exist, but just increase it even more. Because now you're gonna have all of the benefits that come from on-chain on Ethereum 2, 
plus the ability to do a significant portion of the processing off-chain on a layer two solution. So most likely these solutions are going to be around for a while. So far we've talked about optimistic rollups. There is also ZK rollups, zero knowledge rollups. And if you want a decent overview of the differences between these as well as the differences between optimism and arbitrum, there is a podcast that I listened to part of it, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't finish it, but the beginning was pretty good. And I'll probably finish this at some point in the future. But this is a good podcast because it actually puts people from these different projects, Arbitrum, Optimism, and ZK Sync, all in one room to talk and essentially debate about these different Layer 2 solutions. So it's a very good overview, and it's not to bias in any direction. So I'll drop a link to all of these resources down in the pinned comment if you want links to any of these articles or podcasts. Now, when I learned about Uniswap, Considering Arbitrum, I started to ask about these other decentralized exchanges, such as SushiSwap, which is a big competitor of Uniswap. So I think Sushi will be switching to Arbitrum as well, based off of this tweet, which warning is a little bit flashy. So I'll show you that here. Basically, all it says is Sushi, Arbitrum coming soon. To the point, but also very vague. And also this tweet here from the co-founder guy, Arbitrum update deployed. What exactly that means, I don't know. <laughs> Again, going back to lots of projects launching on Arbitrum, I think the article from Arbitrum themselves mentions over 250 teams have requested access for our developer launch, and we can't wait to see what they build on Arbitrum and how much gas savings this will enable. So I also wonder, you know, what's with the love for Arbitrum? What happened to Optimism? It seemed like everybody was on Optimism, waiting for that to happen. Well, Honestly, I think this is really just a timing thing. If you go to the Optimism webpage, it talks about their roadmap to launch, and the public mainnet is July 2021, and it's only June 2021. We don't have time to wait an entire month. So, you know, if Arbitrum is ready, ready to go, then there's no reason to not use Arbitrum, I guess. So maybe once Optimism is fully launched, people will decide between the two, but as of now, Arbitrum is going to take the trophy. So lots of cool stuff going on. I'm excited to see how this affects Ethereum and the different apps out there. Also excited to see Optimism versus Arbitrum and other competitors out there. If there are any other cool projects or updates, be sure to let me know in the comments section below so we can cover them in upcoming videos. I hope to stay a little bit up to date with the decentralized exchange space as well as different updates for centralized exchanges as well. You know, what kind of stuff they're working on, what new tokens they're focusing on. And a lot of these centralized exchanges are realizing that decentralized exchanges are the future. So I think there's gonna be a lot of change there as well. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for the upcoming videos.